Onision Real Life is produced by the people that Onision's going to sue, Discovery Plus, by Blackfin, also someone Onision's going to sue, and E1 Company, also someone Onision's going to sue. At Blackfin, Gino McDermott, an executive producer, okay, Gino McDermott, someone to sue, an executive producer, Grace Miller, showrunner, whatever that means. Discovery is part of the NASDAQ, okay. Just a, a shout out to all the people who are supporting DISCA, DISCB, DISCK. Y'all are about to lose a lawsuit. You might want to pull you. Sued the wrong Chris Hansen. Okay? Do I need to remind you of that? That you walked in the court with a backwards, expired, bulletproof vest, and you had the wrong Chris Hansen served? Yeah, I remember that. That was the um, start of the year of 2020. What a crazy time that was. So threatening to sue a gigantic uh, media company. I don't think that's going to go over too well for you, but hey, you know, I'd love to see you do another lawsuit and lose. I think that would be rich and funny and entertaining for the internet to watch another dumpster fire be burnt up. Um, so yesterday was the release of episode one of three episodes of the Onision documentary. I made a Twitter video a couple weeks back earlier in December saying that what I saw I really liked and I thought it was really solid. There are good parts to this documentary, I believe. Personally, I still stand by that. However, the formatting and how like the transitions of section to section is a little bit funky. It's kind of messy. And the biggest, most interesting part for me of the entire documentary was his um, actual father speaking out. The only thing I heard about his family is the countless, countless, countless videos Onision had made calling his dad every terrible thing you can imagine in uh, on, on YouTube. And there's one big story where they're in the car and there's like a physical altercation and Onision gets sent to juvie. And some additional details are released by the father about that on what went behind the scenes on what actually happened. But it, it's more so a he said, she said type of situation. But the only difference is the court actually sent Onision to juvie because they found out that there was some serious issues that were going on with him. And I just find it really interesting that when somebody speaks about an issue for so, 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 so long, and then somebody who was actually part of the situation speaks up on their side. I find that enlightening. I don't like hearing one side of things ever. But something that I found out, at least this is, I, I tried to confirm this, is that I was sent a section of the documentary. I don't know if it was the actual full documentary that I was sent. I logged on to the, 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 the URL that they sent me the other day, put in the password for the early access section, and there was no more access. I didn't have access to it because I wanted to compare the original episode one to what they sent me to make sure that if it w if they left stuff out or not, because there was definitely some things that I didn't see. When I made a Twitter video, I'm like, yeah, this I, what I really liked about what I saw, which was true, and I still stand by that. It's just that there are things like, particularly this segment, which I take issue with. I think when he joined YouTube in 2006, people were overwhelmingly supportive of him being on the platform. It wasn't until Chris Hansen's YouTube story that the overall dialogue started to change. Now, the guy who said this put out a statement on Twitter saying that he was being sarcastic by this statement. I guess we'll find out in episode two and three if negative stuff he says about Chris Hansen on this documentary makes it in the documentary. I have no idea. I just think that this statement is really, really, really poor and really throws every single person under the bus, and I'm not talking about myself. That being Stevie Wolf and The Amazing Atheist. I found Onision through The Amazing Atheist. But as far as I'm aware, the very first video ever made about Onision, you know, like calling Onision out for his weird behavior, was actually a guy by the name of Stevie Wolf. He's the original OG person. I know people attribute it to me all the time because my videos kind of blew up responding to Onision, but credit needs to be given where credit is due. I was not the first person to do that. Well, the second thing I need to mention is that there are tons of other YouTubers who have made videos on Onision. Chris Hansen coming into the picture did not change the dialogue of people not liking Onision. Onision started in 2006, and over the years, between 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, people disliked Onision because of the content that he produced and the things that he did. That is why the dislike of Onision has grown exponentially over the years, it's not because of Chris Hansen. Sure, did Chris Hansen bring more awareness to Onision? Absolutely. But Chris was not the crux of people disliking Greg. It was people like iNabber, people like Creepshow Art, people like Edwin, people like Stevie Wolf, people like The Amazing Atheist, people like myself, people like The Right Opinion. You want to see the best videos on Onision? Go subscribe to The Right Opinion. He makes great content. To make a statement, even though... Allegedly, this is a sarcastic statement. I still don't see how that is. To make a statement saying that Chris Hansen changed the dialogue, and that's when things really started to, you know, fire up 
is just factually incorrect and throws every single creator under the bus for responding and research and work that they've done documenting Onision's crazy, nasty behavior. That, that's just a personal feeling I have. I think everybody needs to be included in this. It's not me. It's not like one specific person. It's an all-inclusive thing. Lots of people don't like Onision. Lots of people have exposed him for doing horrible things. My biggest problem with episode one of this documentary is how it looks at Chris Hansen. And I've been told that apparently episode two and three is going to be a little bit different and it's going to go after Chris, but I don't know. From episode one, I just don't see that happening. I hope I'm wrong, and I very well could be wrong with how episode two and three comes out. Uh, let me look here really quick. So if I go to, uh, okay, so episode, sorry about this, episode two and three comes out January 11th and 18th. I haven't seen those. I don't know if I'm going to get a preview. Probably not, since I'm speaking out parts of it negatively. Something that kind of did tick me off, though, is this particular uh, comment here it says, I hope you'll consider making a commentary video about the story. And to me, in my YouTube head, this is like mainstream media trying to like get free promotions uh, from YouTubers for free. It's not to say, even if they did pay me, I don't think I, I, I wouldn't, I still wouldn't promote this. And I don't know where episode two and three is going because I haven't seen it. I can't comment on it. I still got my, you know, my gut feeling that I originally made when I said, no, I'm not going to be on this documentary. I, de I denied the, I denied being interviewed. They wanted me to get on camera and be interviewed and be on this, be like a main speaker of this documentary. And I just didn't feel comfortable based upon a lot of things that happened behind the scenes and things I was being told. And mainly because Chris Hansen was involved in it. That is actually one of the main reasons I didn't want to be in this documentary and be interviewed was because of his involvement. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't really know where this is going other than this email was sent out to multiple other people. I hope you consider making a commentary video about the story. And yeah, I'm making a video about it, but it's not exactly the most positive. I don't really like where, how it made Chris Hansen look. Stuff about his family and even stuff about Shiloh, I, I think that was pretty solid. Chris Hansen isn't the savior that we thought he was. That much has been established. I don't think anybody making videos about Onision is a savior of anybody, you know? But hey, Onision made a video the other day responding to Creep Show's art video on this documentary. Uh, that is linked down below in the description if you want to watch it. Near the end of the video, Onision had some things to say, which, even though I talked about this over a year and a half ago, I'm going to address it again just because. It's always good to keep people up to date with things when they get re-brought up by Onision. So here we go. Why does no one ask me? You know, why does no one just say, hey, James, uh, who was the first person to really wage war on you? It was the Amazing Atheist. Repsion, you want to know how? <laughs> was it? Repsion. Oh, my God. You mean that guy who's accused of rape? The accused rapist? Is that what you're talking about? Repsion, the accused rapist? So I have a question, Greg. Why did you remove the original video which you accused me of this? You specifically called me a quote-unquote violator. I actually made a video over a year and a half ago titled Onision Slanders Me. And it's really not that big a deal. I don't really take this to heart. It doesn't really bother me at all. Because I know how this stuff works. A friend of a friend told Onision that I am a R, allegedly. And then Onision actually made a whole video about me saying that Ah, uh, Repsion's this violator, he did this, 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 and then people are like, okay, well, there has to be, you know, a testimony, evidence, or something, there has to be something, right? It can't be just, a friend of a friend said this, therefore it's true. Which, ironically enough, Greg, that I don't know if you know this, but that friend who told you that actually apologized to me, and I always say this, and I'll, I said it in my video over a year and a half ago, and I'll say it again here. If I have done a crime, please report me to the police. If I am a arist, then please go to the police. I'm serious. Go to the police. It just blows my mind how, like, a friend of a friend said this, therefore it must be true. And then you make a video over a year ago, and now, again, reaffirming the same thing, saying the same thing about me. At the end of the day, people can believe what they want. It's not a big deal to me. No matter who you are, nobody wants to be called the R word. Like, I don't find that funny, and especially falsely. But, hey, we're on YouTube where a lot of false things are said. And accused, uh, isn't he accused of grooming too, as I heard? I'm just, you notice I'm using the word accused. Yeah, that's how you use that word. Greg, I've been on this platform for 13 years. I've been accused of literally everything. I've been called every word in the book. There is nothing I don't think I haven't been called at some point in 13 years on this platform. You start to uh, attract every single type of person. But I'll give you some history on how this started. Because no matter who you are, no matter how big a creator you are, 
or small, if people don't like you, rumors do start. They do. They do. Somebody starts something that some rumors turn out to be true, some rumors are not. You have website forms dedicated to the lives of YouTubers, myself included. Everybody, literally any person who's a public figure, there's a big form. And people discuss their private lives and things they do and they do things that they say. Like, it's just part of the internet. But how this rumor started was from this tweet right here. Now, this tweet is no longer on Twitter. The account is actually suspended. But this was from a disgruntled ex-fan of mine in which, at the time, he was messaging literally every single one of my followers, direct messaging them, telling them that I am a pleto. That apparently there are non-existent <laughs> messages of when I was 18 talking to a 13-year-old. No, I'm not joking. That's a pretty big rumor to start, but hey, when you're a disgruntled ex-fan and things don't go the way that you want, and you get involved in things that you really shouldn't be involved in, there are just those people on the internet that they see anything on the internet, they believe it. That exists on here. Especially on YouTube, especially on any social media. People read headlines, they automatically believe headlines. Every single person at, at some point has been guilty of this, myself included. I've read a headline and I'm like, well, it must be true. But we can't operate that way. We really can't. It's dishonest and can cause real life repercussions for anybody's life. What's funny to me is how I can't disprove something that doesn't exist. And then when this individual was scrutinized very heavily for saying something as serious as that, apologized and said that that didn't happen, which of course it didn't. And the thing is, is that this person was so persistent in spreading this rumor that eventually even Keemstar, yes, the one and only Keemstar picked it up and I got into an argument with him on a live stream with Edwin's Generation, which you, it's also linked down, it's linked down below if you want to watch it, highly recommend. But Keemstar implied that I met up with a 12-year-old. I'm not joking. All stemming from this constant, you know, tweeting of saying the same thing over and over and over and like direct messaging people who follow me and everybody who, anybody who supports me, this they were messaged this stuff. It's just crazy to me. It's absolutely bonkers. It's bonkers. Look at the internet right now. Look what's happening on YouTube, on Twitter, on social media with the whole Carson thing too. It's like the YouTube is all the wild, wild west. When people are upset, when people are angry, Sometimes they'll scrape so bottom of the barrel that they'll say anything, regardless of whether there is truth to it or not, in order to try to attack other people. And at that point, you really have to question people's intentions and motives and- I remember watching Repsion's first couple of videos about Onision, the ones where he was talking about Greg's treatment of Shiloh, things that were featured in this documentary. You know Repsion apologized to me, right? Do you, you don't know that Repsion apologized to me, you doofus? Here's Repsion apologizing for videos he made about me. Here's Repsion apologizing for being a creep. And he's also saying he's not apologizing because he's asking for help. He just wants to apologize to me. So this is your hero, Repsion, apologizing to Onision on August 9th, 2017. So everything you have to say about Daniel Repsion being superhero pre-2017, he apologized to me for. So what were you saying about him being so great? Hey, Greg, do you know how to read an email? Apparently you don't know how to write either because I just finished re reviewing your book last week. But holy cow, that email from 2017, which you just put out there, highlights a very specific thing. The word specific here is used that I apologize for making anti-vegan and anti-vegetarian videos because now, years later, I think veganism and vegetarianism is a great lifestyle to live. And those old videos where I was like hammering you for being a vegan or vegetarian or whatever, you know, like I changed my outlook on that and I wanted to apologize to you. It was something that I felt like I needed to do. Some people were like, well, you should, that's stupid. You don't need to do that. It's not about you. It's about me. I wanted to apologize for something very specific, which this email confirms. But somehow, some way, in your demented, weird, mushy head, you seem to think that me apologizing for something specific means that I've apologized for all of my content on you. Absolutely not, my dude. I also apologize many, 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 many years ago for sending a Facebook message to Kai back when you guys got married. I shouldn't have done that. That was invasive. That was like, the, that's like the one invasive thing I think I've ever done is I send a Facebook message to your partner. And even now it still stands. I should never have done that. But that was what, eight, nine years ago? But leave it to Greg to take an apology and make it out to be something that doesn't reflect what I'm actually saying. Because apparently, Greg, you can't read emails properly. You're not going to pull the plus one card by using an apology for two specific 
different instances and then apply an apology universally to all of my content towards you. No, that's not gonna happen. You know something, Greg? My sponsors love you. In fact, there's a specific sponsor I have that's actually requested to me to make fun, funny, entertaining Onision videos about you! I've literally had a sponsor say, hey, could you make a video about Greg because they do so well and it gets more views and it's like, sure, I'm getting paid to do it. Why not make it entertaining? Give me, you, you literally create content for people to make fun of you and people make bank off of it. They can. A lot of my videos have been claimed and demonetized, but there are some of them that are monetized and have made money. Thank you for the sponsors. Thank you for the, the GoFundMe. Thank you for taking me to court because it all worked out in my favor. And you're to, you're to owe for that. And out of my heart, I appreciate you. Thank you.